Today, I'm going to make a response video to a fairly old video, but also a fairly popular one about making combat more interesting. This video was released by WASD20 about a year ago. And while I think a lot of the conclusions there are pretty solid, I don't agree with the process that he uses for coming to those conclusions. This is important because good repeatable process is the most important thing in teaching a skill. Somebody who can come to good conclusions is somebody who's good at the thing, and that can be a result of intuition, which can be a result of experience. But if you're trying to teach people what makes one thing better than another thing, you really have to understand the process by which you achieve those conclusions. Now, before I get into it, I want to make it really clear that nothing about this video is meant to suggest that I don't like this guy or that I think he's bad at what he does. It's really just a matter of, I think there's some decent advice in here, but I also think it could go deeper. In some cases, I think he misses the mark a little bit on why certain things work the way that they do. And I also want to really add a few things that I think he's missed. A designer's perspective is all about starting with a big picture and then working downwards and then ending up at the little nitty gritty details. The reason that distinction is so important is that if you start with a high level thing, all the nitty gritty details serve very particular purposes and come together to form a very cohesive whole. Whereas if you start with the details, then you end up in a situation where you have a lot of details to keep track of. None of them necessarily come from any one specific idea. And then as a result, you end up with a little few things that make sense individually, but don't necessarily come together very well. So the first reason he gives that your combat might be boring and boring isn't very well defined here, which for a designer is a problem. For his game, it might not be a problem. And for one DM trying to solve the combat problems that they're having in one game, maybe that's good enough. But for a designer, you have to be really careful about being super clear and concrete about what your goals are. Boring, not good enough as a design problem. His first reason is it lacks purpose. And he asks the question, what's the story? The first reason your combat might be boring is because it lacks purpose. What's the story? What purpose does it serve for the overall narrative of your game? I almost completely agree with this. The problem is that he's talking about the literal narrative, like the plot that's unfolding, probably also talking about the characterization. I'm sure he's talking about a lot of story elements, but he's really talking about literally the narrative and story that's being told in that game. Whereas I'm more concerned with what's the narrative that unfolds through the combat by way of the mechanics, which is exemplified in the combat curve. For me, I avoid random encounters for this very reason. I like to be intentional about each encounter, which is not to say that all DMs should avoid random encounters or that they can't serve a purpose. A lot of DMs use them really well, I know. He says that he likes to avoid random encounters, which fair enough. And he also says that some DMs use random encounters to great success. Well, what's the difference then? What's the difference between a random encounter that's used poorly versus a random encounter that's used to great success? And again, I think the answer lies in combat curves. It lies in the, in the dynamics of the fight itself, again, by way of those systems that you create. If a random encounter takes up one hour of every three to four hour session, it's worth asking if you want to spend a quarter to a third of your gain time on things that don't really drive the main narrative of your campaign all that much. Then he talks about combat that takes up a third of the playtime that doesn't have anything to do with the story as being a bad thing or as, as, as indicating a problem, which I can't agree less with because the most important thing isn't story. The most important thing is player experience and story is a huge component of that, but player experience is actually the most important thing. Now, why is this an important distinction? It's because if you're thinking about things in terms of narrative being the number one thing and not player experience, you come to conclusions like this, where the problem with the combat is that there's not enough story in it, but combat is really mechanically driven. And if you figure out how to utilize mechanics in order to tell stories, then you don't have this problem at all. And again, I'm not trying to say that he's bad at what he does. I'm just trying to say that a designer's perspective is fundamentally different than the player's perspective. And most DMs tend to apply a player's perspective. Whereas I'm trying to get you to really think more like a designer. This is really a design channel more than it is a D&D channel. Now, a second point is that combat is just too slow. That might be a reason that your combat is boring. Your combat might also be boring because it's too slow. And yeah, I mostly agree with what he says here. A lot of the individual points he makes are are, are totally on point. I agree 100% that you should be doing things like trying to, trying to keep combat flowing so that players are taking their turns quickly and you don't forget things that the monster is doing. You should definitely look up the stats and make sure you know them before the battle starts. These, these are all good pieces of advice that he's giving. But again, it's kind of missing the core point. He's addressing some more surface level issues and addressing them very well, actually, 
But the core issue here is that combat needs to be paced well, not that it needs to be fast. Now, what's the difference between speed and pacing? So in my combat curve series, we talk about intensity peaks and valleys. And really what pacing is, is the distance between the peaks and the distance between the valleys and how many of each of those things is in a combat. So if you have a 10 round combat with eight or seven peaks and valleys, then you've got a pretty fast paced combat because there's one new peak happening almost every round, which is way faster than something, for example, like the mini boss curve, which has one peak and two valleys, even though it can take place over five rounds of combat. So we're really looking at pacing, not speed. And in this case, I'd say that that's actually a really important distinction because he's talking about literally how long in real time does the combat take? Whereas I'm talking about how much stuff happens round to round because then the actual real time doesn't matter very much. I've run combats that last an entire session without the players ever feeling like the combat is going too long, ever. And you can actually do that as long as you're really careful about what the actual pacing of the combat is. So the amount of time that the combat takes is less of an issue. But again, things like players not knowing what to do on their turns or you not knowing what your stat blocks are or getting initiative confused, those are all little problems that you should absolutely be trying to solve because those affect both speed and pacing in a, in a very real way. Because real world time is obviously the way that players are experiencing things. They're not experiencing things round to round in a direct sense. A round takes a certain amount of real time versus a certain amount of game time and they're making that distinction. But you have to consider both. He also talks about reducing monster hit points while increasing monster damage in order to increase the speed of the fight. Another way to speed things up is to boost the damage monsters are dealing and reduce their overall hit points. Again, this is an okay solution sometimes and is very party dependent, but it can be a huge problem because you're thinking too much about speed and not enough about pacing. I often increase monster HP in order to extend the combat so that I can hit the curves that I need to hit. So for example, if I plan a five round combat and I know when the peaks and valleys are supposed to hit and we're hitting rounds three or four and we haven't hit the second peak that I'm trying to hit, then I might extend combat so that we can hit that next peak. That's really important because I need that for the pacing and I need it in order to make the things that are happening next to make emotional sense because the combat creates emotional context for the things that happen next. Your combat also might be boring because you've made it all about the PCs and their enemies, and you've forgotten, the third party, the environment. Reason number three that he gives is it's all about the PCs and their enemies, and they forget about the environment. Now, I actually agree with this, but again, it comes down to how the combat's supposed to play out in terms of the pacing. So I'm not gonna harp too much on this because it's more or less the same kind of response where think about how the environment affects your pacing and you're gonna be a lot more successful at driving combat and making combat more interesting than anything else. Don't worry so much about Am I using the environment? Worry more about, are the players hitting those intensity peaks and then falling at the rate I need them and then rising at the rate that I need them to? That's really what you have to worry about. If you can use the environment to help you do that, great. In fact, a lot of times you can. A lot of times if you're struggling to hit those peaks and valleys, using the environment more can help you do that when you weren't able to do it before. Absolutely. So it's the right conclusion, but it's sort of the wrong reason for that conclusion. The last way your combat might be boring is that it lacks narrative description. Now, the main problem here is that narrative is kind of the icing on the cake when it comes to combat. You can drive combat effectively using pretty much just mechanics. Sometimes if I'm running a lot of things, I get a little overwhelmed and I'm not thinking too much about making sure I sell every attack or make sure that the environment is properly described or making sure that, that the narrative of the combat is being well established but I still pretty well accomplished my goals experientially with that fight. And that goes back to what I said at the very beginning where player experience is the most important thing. Now, icing on the cake is a good thing to have, but if your cake sucks, then the icing doesn't help. So having good icing and good cake is the most important thing, but when it comes to combat, the mechanics and the design of the combat itself is the cake and the narrative is the icing. So that's it for my response. I'm gonna link that original video in case you wanna go see it, check the context. Maybe I missed something, hopefully not. I tried not to misrepresent anything he said. And I wanna stress that you can absolutely improve your DM game by applying a lot of the tips that he gives you here. They're pretty good tips. But if you wanna be a designer and improve as a designer, then a lot of the tips that he gives you are not gonna help very much. And if you're trying to improve as a designer by way of DMing, then I suggest you 
actually think a lot more carefully about the reasoning behind those things and how you can utilize the game mechanics themselves in order to solve similar goals and frame the design problems in a way that allow you to do that more effectively. Because he's framed things a lot from a narrative perspective, which is fine. Again, it's from a very detail-oriented perspective. I don't think he's bad at his job. I didn't hate the video or anything. I just had a few things that I wanted to point out because if you're trying to be a designer, things like that can be kind of traps to fall into because it's it's thinking about things in a little bit too detail-oriented a way when you want to approach it from the opposite angle. So I hope this was helpful. Again, nothing against that guy. Go check out his video. It's pretty good. And I don't know what I'm doing next, but you'll find out when I do it. Bye!